those of you who are familiar with this idea, I've been working with what's on the right-hand side next to the trigram here. I was thinking of this as a mind in time. That's what I had this slide titled before. The whole idea of the trigram being related to time was to some extent inspired by Terence McKenna's assertion that the Yijing is in some way or another related to cycles of time. And while I never fully bought his concept, I thought it was interesting. And it was that idea that first started to make sense of this, but I, I'm finding some limitations. And in some respects, I'd say that time is really a very slippery concept. And it'll be a lot clearer if we can just do without it. And so that's why I prefer what we have now here on the left. Memory, sense, and imagination. We can see how these things are tied to the concept of time. Memory, of course, being of things which occurred in the past. Sensing being the thing which is information about what's happening presently. And the imagination being a, a sense of what might happen. But I don't like the idea, like the first thing that started to get me reconsidering this is that the imagination has the potential to change the past. In other words, it has the potential to change our memory. And so I really started to think that the concept of time is really, because fundamentally we are talking about consciousness, right? So what happens within consciousness? Well, we know that these are the constituent components of what's, uh, I mean, am I missing something here? Is there anything more than memory, sense, and imagination? I, I mean, maybe, maybe there is something else, but I'm not aware of what it might be. One of the first things that's interesting to consider if we think about thunder now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the model, this is thunder in prenatal and this is thunder in postnatal. They are inversions of each other. It's called the arousing, right? Arousing thunder. So think about what it's like. Like one of the keys to this whole thing is to really try to picture what the state of mind is. So this is just yang in the bottom line. So the focus of attention is placed on the imagination. And that could be imagination about anything. It could be a, an idea about the future, but it could also be imagination about previous events. You could be imagining things that you didn't know about something that happened before. And in a certain sense, you could say, well, that is actually a future modification of past events but that's why i just don't i want to get rid of time because it gets confusing right it's way easier to just say you're just imagining things that may have happened that are part of the story of the past we do it all the time right it may be in our own personal lives and it may be what's happening within the world we have a certain amount of information we experience something we had some data points that seem really solid, and then we're trying to fill in the rest of it, right? So those more solid data points would be mountain, stillness, and they're solid, right? Mountain is, so memory, real memory, is something which shouldn't change much if it's truly memory, right? But memory can be modified, right? And that's what the imagination will do. Now, what happens when you start to imagine things? There is a kind of arousing that occurs, right? You start to go, oh, it could be, right? And things kind of well up and you, a picture forms. Now, I've also said in the past that the yang line is the focus of attention. And in some ways, I've ignored what the meaning of yin is. Just because the focus of attention isn't there, that doesn't mean that nothing is happening there. So we can think about uh, imaginative, we can focus on an imaginative effort in the mind and uh, things will occur. We will have differences in sensation, right? The senses might start to feel different when you're imagining. And memory, like I said, may get modified, either consciously or unconsciously. 
So when we have yin lines, it doesn't necessarily mean that nothing's going on. It just means it's not what we're focusing on. Because fundamentally, all three positions are always happening. That's what consciousness is. There are we is. not always imagining things in one way or another? So what would it mean for any of these things to really be deactivated? So when there's yang here, in a, in a sense, it means that the, the consciousness is focused upon that particular attribute. Or maybe a better word would be faculty. Faculty of, of consciousness is what the yang line is focusing on. And so it would make sense that ideally you would be able to have all three. That's why this would be heaven. But of course, it's difficult to be aware of all three. It's difficult to focus on all three. Maybe to some extent impossible, which is why the, uh, the earth is so important when it comes to meditation techniques. So the emptying of all of these capacities and allowing to occur what occurs without our using our effort to try to modify, you know, that is in essence, if we're thinking about just the prenatal in meditation techniques, it's the emptiness where we're not putting effort into what's occurring within our consciousness that produces the capacity to sense the Tao, to sense heaven, for heaven to arise within us, you could say. And the moment that we start to actually think about any of these things, the moment that we try to grasp, the moment that we try to focus on what arises, it's gone. We blew it. Ding, 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 down the side we go. <laughs> so should I try to work through the, uh, the whole cycle? I mean, should we account for all of these within the new model? I think uh, it's pretty obvious in many respects, but uh, I don't know. It would be kind of a short video if I just stopped now. So, yeah, we talked about thunder. Well, what about fire? Well, imagination and memory, isn't that basically what desire is? Like quite often, desire is not sensory enjoyment. Desire is wanting sensory enjoyment. It's thinking about the potential of sensory enjoyment, right? It's yearning after someone or something that you don't presently have, not here in the present. The senses are not enjoying that thing. It's just the imagination and the memory kind of conspiring together to form this, well, in the case of the postnatal, to form the object of desire. Okay, so then what about, uh, what about lake? Lake is the focus of attention on the imagination and the sense. What could be more joyous than sensorily engaging with your imagination? Isn't that what the most awesome experiences always are? And not having to worry about memory, kind of forgetting about memory for the time being, isn't that a relief? Doesn't that describe kind of a joyous state? We already discussed heaven briefly, let's take a look at wind. Gentle, the penetrating wind. Now, gentle and penetrating, it's like, what do, what do those two adjectives have to do with each other? Well, we're thinking about present and memory. I'm sorry, we're thinking about sense and memory without imagination. So in other words, it's a sensory engagement with things that have already occurred, a kind of uh, going over something without modification. So that's why it's penetrating. It gets deeper and deeper. It's like learning. In order to learn something, you have to practice, practice, practice. What's gentle about it? Well, without the imaginative focus, it, it's not changing that much. It's kind of predictable. And so it's not having a strong modifying effect. It's over the long course of time that it becomes deeper and deeper. It's also fascinating to consider that, you know, this, this is right after, I'm not going to get sidetracked, okay? So screw, screw what's fascinating right now. Let's stay on track. Water is pretty obvious, right? It's just sense without any context of memory or imagination. You know, and, and from this model, the yin lines, things can occur there, right? But it's not where the focus is. The focus is just simply on the sense, what you're experiencing now. People who are in a, a state of, of crisis, 
where they're, they're unable to control themselves quite often or overwhelmed by the sensations that they're having. It's the senses that take over and they, they lose access to the memory. They lose access to the imaginative capacity that would help to relieve them of the condition that they're in. Because if you're being imaginative in a crisis situation, you can see, okay, well, there's, there's the potential for change always. So maybe I'll be able to find a way out of this situation eventually if I just stay calm. Keep. So it's this just the sense focus, right? Which, of course, is the root of the postnatal because it's, it's that concern with whether or not we're going to have sense experiences that are bearable or enjoyable that drives the entire desire pattern, you could say. And then, of course, we mentioned mountain. Why it's stillness? Because memory is meaningless if it keeps changing. It's a way more elegant way of looking at it. It eliminates the issues with time. It's a more accurate description of the capacities of consciousness. And it also means that I have to do a tremendous amount of work in order to rewrite the papers that I've written on this. And that's part of the reason why I decided to really work on this and think about it a bit more carefully because I have a part two to the paper that I wrote. There's a fair amount of activity viewing that paper, and now I have to rewrite it in these terms because the second part, which describes the Bagua, is going to be way easier to write with this model. And forget about time. I did write a paper about time where I basically say that it, it fundamentally doesn't e exist, although <laughs> now I have this new definition of the word exist. I recently learned that exist actually means not being, ex, out of, being, ist. So, um, so that ends up being pretty interesting. So you could say that time does exist because it's outside of being. <laughs> all right, I'm going to have to edit all that out because that's just too confusing. So, okay, here we go. Uh, uh, a new version, an updated model. And um, I hope it's easier for people to understand because I know that uh, there's a certain hurdle in getting into this language and being able to really understand what's being said in these arrangements and that is really the fundamental message you you can't understand these arrangements without understanding the trigrams you have to be able to picture what the mind feels like you can you have to be able to kind of imagine inside yourself right what the different trigrams represent and get a sense of what that mental picture is in order to understand well, let's go to this one where you can start to picture the cycle in both the prenatal and the postnatal and then you start to see the incredible logic and and the degree to which it corresponds with what we actually experience it's quite remarkable whoever designed these symbols and uh, put them in this arrangement it is truly stunning and the number of ways in which one can view phenomena in these terms and really kind of, a, it's like an elemental key to a, a, a certain type of understanding. I, I believe it's essentially endless. And I guess that means that I will never run out of things to be talking about. So... On some level, that's good news. On some level, maybe I should just shut up right now. So we'll just call it that for, uh, for this video. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you would like to assist these efforts, I would greatly appreciate whatever it is you can do. If that's uh, signing up on Patreon, even a dollar a month is really helpful, not only I mean, it's not really helping me out financially, but just having a few people who are like, you know what, I'll send a tip your way. It does make it feel like I'm doing something that's worthwhile. I got to admit, you know, I, I have enough faith to keep doing this without that, but 
it is a good motivator and it and it definitely kind of uh focuses me more and gives me uh more incentive to uh to do this and uh and of course you know passing it around doing the like button subscribe button thing all that stuff is really helpful too so uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this useful in your life. And until next time, adios.